Welcome to another edition of Lee's Open Mic. And today, man, we're excited to have Jimmy J.J. Walker, America's sweetheart. We all remember <laughs> from good times. Good to see you, Jimmy. Thanks it's for coming. Good to in, be buddy. here. Uh, let's talk about you've been in the business now. There was stand up because you started when? When was the first time on stage for you? 1968. 1968. Where was that? Huh? Where was that? That was in uh, Harlem, New York. I worked with a group called The Last Poets, which is. They would fit in now, actually, with all the stuff that's going on. So uh, I worked with them, and then I worked the Apollo Theater, which is a legendary theater in New York on the old Chitlin oh, yeah. circuit. Right. So I worked there. You know, we're back to the Chitlin circuit stages now, and uh, uh, <laughs> in a way, yeah, we are. Well, we? we have uh, black clubs, white clubs, Hispanic yep. clubs, st stuff like that. Because we've gotten very uh, comedy is very polarized. It's it's. Uh, it, it's very ethnic now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much dirtier. The waters are much dirtier than when I started. And uh, but you don't work that way. I came at a different time. You know, I came in with the Johnny Carson people and yeah. the Ed Sullivan people. Right. And you had to have jokes and stuff like that. Jokes, I don't think, are no longer necessary. I don't think people do jokes anymore. People kind of talk about their life mm -hmm. and their mental problems or their problems with their wives, girlfriends, moms, whatever the story, story is, and hope that you can say, I relate to that. That happened to me. Yeah. So, but in terms of the old Rodney Dangerfield kind of killer sets that he had in the 80s on Carson, it's hard to write jokes, and people can't write jokes anymore. But the guys who do write jokes and do it fundamentally sound with the way the Carson guys would want you to do it are the guys that are doing really well. There's guys that are doing well, the Gaffigans, the Brian Regans, the Seinfelds that are doing Same, well. Right. Even the Bill Burrs, who you mentioned Bill earlier. Burr, Bill Burr, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and, and R-rated act, but nevertheless very good. But and, fundamentally, and it's fundamentally set up sound. punch. Set up punch. I yeah. think that Bill Burr is in that rare rarefied air that I go back to Richard Jenny yeah and then when when uh, Leno was doing comedy right uh, even though he's still a comic but when Leno was doing comedy he was one of the most respected guys yeah I think Bill Burr is taking that mantle now yeah. no, Bill Burr him. and uh, probably Dave Chappelle are the two oh, yeah. most respected guys now let me ask you about uh, when when you got to Los Angeles at some point, uh, you were a comedy store guy? Was that where you were working at? Uh, you? There's a big book coming out now. There's a whole bunch of books that, for someone who doesn't work the, the hot spots, mm -hmm. I get a lot of work in these books, boy. <laughs> they put me in every book because I was involved yeah. in every club, yeah. everything. So I'm in Bud Friedman's book. Okay. So he's an improv guy. He's right? an improv guy. I started at the improv. Okay. That was my place. Yeah. And I was there with Richard Pryor and David Brenner and Bette Mittler and Woody Allen and David Steinberg. We were all there together. Yeah. And I make no bones that I started there. Mm -hmm. That was my place. When I went to Los Angeles, I worked a comedy store. Yeah. Bud was not in the comedy, the comedy business in Los Angeles. Right. He was in the wrong community on community property when he lost the improv in New York. Yeah. He came to Los Angeles. I was already at the store. Yeah. I went to the improv to work there also. Mitzi, who was our owner uh -huh. at the store, yeah. said, you can't work the both. improv. Yeah. You can't do both. You would go down and still do the improv, but what Mitzi would do is she'd have one of her people call the improv and say, hi, I'm coming in from Louisville. Who's going to be there tonight? And then say Jimmy Walker, Freddie Prinze, whatever. Right. Then she would call you and go, what are you doing at the improv? <laughs> you can't work there. Yeah. So she made people make a choice. Mm -hmm. I was already at the store. I just didn't want to make any problems. So I just stayed at the store. But things, I didn't like him. Yeah. So in his book, and you're going to read his book that's coming out in like three weeks, it's going to be savage of how horrible Jimmy Walker was. <laughs> and I had nothing to yeah. do with it. It was forced upon us yeah. that you had to make a choice. So you had people like Pryor, me, Steve Martin. We all stayed at the store. Yeah. You had people like Elaine Boozler, uh, Robert Klein. They stayed at the improv. It's just what happened. It has nothing to do 
Bud's taking it very personal. Here we are, hard, you know, whatever it is, 40 years later, and I'm getting savage. <laughs> And you just go, what's happening? And, then, and you're just a kid looking for stage time. Really. That's all you're trying to yeah. do is get on. That you know, was it. I, uh, I gained a respect for your stand-up because when, when I'm a kid growing up here in Kentucky, all I know is J.J., you know. Right, and, right. and I love J.J. I love Good Times. Right. one of my favorite shows. But I started to gain some respect for you just because of the appearances you would do on Letterman. And Letterman would talk about your friendship with him. And, well, see, and, and my because I was a Letterman guy. And then I'm like, wait a minute. i got to take another look at J.J. You know? Here's the story. You know, I write a lot of material. People don't write material anymore. Those yeah. days are over. But I had a lot of, because the competition was so thick, I said, I need help. So I hired a lot of guys to write for me because mm -hmm. I had chips in those days because I was on the show. So I could pay guys. So I had, on my staff, I had Letterman. Yeah. I had Leno. I had Louis Anderson. I had Byron Allen. That's I had a, Elaine that's a, Boozler. That's a talent pool right there. I had a staff of 31 guys writing for me and yeah. girls writing for me constantly. You pay by the joke? How would you pay them? Pay them by the week. And oh, so they were a staff. They were a staff. This was a unit. We were a thriving, moving, grooving unit. And I think mentally what you do for somebody is when you hire them at X amount of dollars a week, yeah. th that person goes, I am now in show business. Right. I am now making a living doing this. And this guy, because I take guys at the beginning of their career, when they were not, you know, nobody knew who they were, nothing. They were just standing in the, at the store, in the front of the store right. or, or the improv. So if you pay a guy, let's say now, this is not then, but let's, let's say you pay a guy 1500 bucks a week to write for you. A guy's going to go, I was doing nothing. I was nowhere. This guy hired me. Dave Letterman was one of those guys. Yeah. He, when he got his show, he said, not to say he owes this guy, but he says, this guy believed in me when yeah. I wasn't David Letterman. Right. It's the same thing with uh, Louis Anderson. Mm -hmm. If you talk to Louis, Louis will tell you the same thing. He was a guy getting ready to go back to Minneapolis because he was a social worker and he couldn't get on stage. I went in and I got, got him on stage. Byron Allen, he was in high school. He was delivering newspapers. He says, here's the guy who's going to pay me 300 bucks a week while I'm in high school to write for him. I'm hiring this guy. because yeah. uh, Not to say he owes, but he feels whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of guys, and I listen to guys like Howard Stern and whatever. You go, if you hired a guy and said, hi, I'm the Howard Stern Show. I'm hiring you. And you can come on once in a while and do a couple of jokes. And I put guys on. If you watch my show, you'll see David Letterman is on our show. Yeah. You'll see Jay Leno's on our show. You'll see there's writers that are, went to work for Married with Children that I got on the show. So there's guys who feel, gee whiz, this guy believed in me when I was whatever. Right. And so if you have the chips, if you have that, and you have the management, I would be a guy today. I don't have the chips. But if I was a guy who had the chips today, I would still go hire a guy. One of my guys... Dustin Ibarra is on a show called uh, Kevin Can Wait, which is coming on on ABC in September. I was a guy who got him with CAA. I was a guy who got him an apartment in New York. And he today is now on Kevin Can Wait. He's making 45 grand a week. Yeah. And when I met him, we used to drive to the Waffle House and <laughs> sit there, and he would say, I can barely get on open mic. Yeah. And see... That kind of guy appreciates it. Well, yeah. You know, even George Lopez, when George worked for me, mm -hmm. and George says, before I even had my kidney transplant, you were the guy who used to call me the smart Mexican. You'd <laughs> give me a hundred bucks, whatever. Uh, he says, you know, you're my man. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff like that. So there's a, the, the talent pool is plentiful. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. But the work is not. <laughs> right, that's right. But the work that you get, I mean, you still love it. I mean, is that uh, is there a I'm moment? I'm a grinder. That, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm not a star. I'm not at the top level. I can barely get into most clubs. It does. And, and again, and the thing you got to remember is, it's not you. People that see me work, they go, "My God, <laughs> this guy is really good. Yeah. What's the problem?" Yeah. And I and and. and 
it's management, it's luck, it's being in the right place at the time. But I, at the star level thing, I'm at the very bottom of that realm, the very, very bottom. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I'm not good. I, th- th- there's guys that work hard at the career, but no one works harder than me. Well, and, and, and at some and point, though, Jimmy, I mean, it's going to pay off again. Don't you think there's going to be, there's going to be some magic? There's it may, may not. It may not. May not, but may it not. might. It, it might, but it may not be, because most people have never really even seen Jimmy Walker. They don't yeah. even know what he does. What is, what is this guy? Does he just say dynamite? Is that the story? But, but in that, it may be, that may be the magic right there, is that well, you may be discovered by a whole new generation that didn't know anything that, about good times but let me, JJ. Let me, let me say this, and this is going to sound terrible. The people don't matter. This is going to sound really No, really I know what you mean. Yeah, if the, you don't know somebody, if, right. if, if you don't have I, a key to the kingdom, you can't get I would get rather have a Les Moonves say, Jimmy Walker's great, I'm hiring him. And if you look at the talent that's out there, that get, that's getting deals, that's going to business affairs, yeah. you look at people constantly getting deals that are constantly failing. And it doesn't mean that they're not talent, but you look at a Marty Short. All right. Martin Short has had no success. Bonnie right. Hunt has had no success. Funny My friend, lady. it doesn't matter that they Bonnie's funny lady. I'm not saying she's not no, funny. No, I know, but I just... But the success level... Now, you look at somebody like a Jimmy Walker, you say, the guy's had success. People know who he is. Why wouldn't you hire a guy like this that could help you? What, I mean, because you can't get on whatever the name of your show is over on the other side. You couldn't get on that show if you're uh, Scott Reynolds. Yeah. You're not getting on. Scott Wilson. Yeah. yeah you're not getting on because they go, <laughs> well, we don't know who that is. So if I'm doing a show and I need a guy to come in and, and, and play a bartender, I'm not saying to start a show, a bartender as a regular. Why not hire Jimmy Walker? Why don't why not why don't we get a campaign going, Jimmy? Let's <laughs> why get not a, hire, we got social there's, media, Jimmy. There's, there's a Let's get you a gig. Of show. That's what I would say. I would hire me, but that's another story. The biggest show. The biggest show. Let's get Jimmy a gig. Jimmy, thanks for coming in, buddy. Thank you, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it, man. It. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Jimmy JJ Walker, right here on this version of Lee's Open Mic.